认识佛教，尊敬的诸位同修 ，respectful， 大家 ，fellow practitioners。Buddha protectors, have a happy, a good evening, Amitofo. Today, we would like to continue uh, to learn how to uh, understand Buddhism because of time. It's eight uh, thirty. To be honest, it's a bit late. So um, we are. In this uh, understanding Buddhism, I might uh, attend until nine ten at the maximum, so that uh, we all uh, uh, take a good opportunity to absorb as much as you could and learn from it. Last time I heard Dylan myself, <laughs> the draft is not complete. Uh, not enough time. Uh, he has been given uh, a lot yesterday. Uh, there's a lot of um, materials uh, for for the three. Um, it can be split into three classes. We can take our time to get in depth to it. And in fact, the beginning is actually the continuation from the last time. Uh, last week, we stopped for two weeks. I would like to say apologies to everyone. Why do we uh, want to learn Buddhism, understand Buddhism? We must understand why in this environment, no matter what race you are, or whatever tribes, or whatever lineage you have, or countries, I believe every one of us have a type of hope, a sense of hope for, uh, especially in modern people, young people, the era for young people, right, is, is now. And they all hope that they can be successful in their uh, career, work, not just the work side, professional side, they also their personal life, also be happy um, uh, without pain, without worries. Uh, that's what we call uh, living happy, a happy life. A lot of people, um, uh, uh, want seek for this kind of um, uh, this kind of uh, treasure, you know, call perfect, beautiful life. However, um, this treasure already exists in front of us, and also, uh, this treasure in Buddhism. It's all found in Buddhism, or pointed out by Buddhism. However, we are not aware of it. This treasure is very clearly uh, stated in Buddhism. As long as you learn seriously, you will get it. You will, you will, you will get the treasure. We must understand that. Uh, we must understand this point. Everyone has the treasure, but you need to work hard to find it back. In the past, that's why in uh, Mr. Ouyang uh, Jingwu, back in the nationalist China era, early 1900s, in 21st uh, century, or 20th century, um, um, Buddhism is required, not just a, a choice, but it's a necessity for the people living in his time, 20th era. And 21st century is no exception because as a human, we have a lot of uh, issues need to be uh, solved and seek help to be solved, uh, seeking help to solve. Uh, so uh, this is why this is the use of Buddhism to us. Uh, so we talk about the terminologies and we talk about uh, enlightenment. 
we want to learn about uh, right. Uh, so we have learned about the first level is right awakening. So we're moving on to the second level called the Zhengjue, equally perfect enlightenment. Equally perfect enlightenment. So why do we need to learn uh, a enlightenment that is equally perfect to Buddha? Why do we need to achieve, achieve this level? Because a person who has equally perfect enlightenment has selflessness. If you use um, a very shallow way to describe uh, me, like who is who am I, the, the, the self, uh, the, 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 the easiest way to understand it, shallowest way to see it is selfishness. Self-interest, selfishness. Uh, today, why we uh, practice Buddhism for for uh, you know amount of time, but our uh, there is no effect, or the effect is minute, uh, is very small. Mm. Because uh, and some people even have more afflictions after learning Buddhism. The more they learn, the more burden they feel, the more unhappy they are, because deep inside their heart, they're still I, this false self is still there. Uh, in deep inside, still me, me, me. And because of I, of course there is this I, illusion of self, we have all the afflictions. Because of my happiness, because I'm sad, because I, got, I, I don't get, I meet, I don't meet, uh, I love, I don't love, I love, I hate. There's a lot coming from this I. And there is why Buddha told us we need to use, uh, we need to, the first step to gain enlightenment, which is true freedom, is to break through this illusion of I. And when you're sick, you go to the doctor, right? So same thing, if your view is wrong or if you're, um, if you're lost, spiritually and all respects you need a doctor like <clears throat> buddha to solve it to help you to point out the solution we need to know that every one of us has disease not just body our heart as well uh, and, and men not just mental like our heart because of um, the false view of self you know illusion of self because there is self then if self cannot be satisfied or if self cannot reach anything, then it's not happy. That, therefore, the affliction begins. Only when one achieves selflessness, selflessness, a person who is selfless can see things clearly. They will be able to tr discern the truth from the falsehood. It's a bit deep now because we're talking about equally perfect enlightenment. We need to um, savor it, uh, to, to pay attention to it. Uh, what is real and false? We use happiness as a standard. You see the actual reality behind this action, deeds, you know, speech, thought, action. What kind of thing I should avoid to avoid myself falling into the cycle of suffering? What are the things I need to face? What is the right thing I need to do, no matter how hard it is, in order to face my um, you know, issues? And you also, we need to see things clearly in order to see what is actually evil, what is actually good, or what is actually twisted, or what is actually pure. It's the path. I'm walking, this is just a metaphor, it, it is that the mindset I have, the attitude, everything, where I speak, is that in the right path. In the five precepts, one of them is uh, no sexual misconduct. And if we can learn about uh, Buddhism in depth, especially uh, the sexual misconduct precepts, if we break, break it, you know, we only 
break not only our marriage, we cause harm to the people around us, not just husband and wife, your own children, your own uh, parents, stuff, and your society in general. So this is one of the cases where we need, we need to have a very clear mind in order to resolve it, in order to walk through. Another case about right and wrong, say, if today my action, my speech, uh, my decision is that right or wrong because is it benefiting people or harming other people in other words and people who has that level of selflessness able to see through the pros and cons the benefits and the harms the right and wrongs of everything because a lot of cases times that we do something without knowing we're harming them or hurting them uh, you know, without intention or in, intentional or unintentional. Sometimes our actions, our speech might harm, harm people without we, us knowing it. Shai Muni Buddha has told us as long as, uh, as long as your heart is empty, void of self selfishness, that means you let go of selfishness, this false sense of self, only then your life will start to change. Your um, everything you do, the way you eat, the way you think, the way you see things, will things, it's different, 180 degree from the worldly people. Uh, as long as there's this I, self is still there, it will cause disease of any level, physical, mental, spiritual, and it requires, it, it needs to be solved. Otherwise, suffering continues. Therefore, today, Buddha told us that if I have not break through the false sense of self, I have not let go the false sense of self, uh, there is no way we're able to see things unbiased and clearly. Not just Buddhism. In the society, whatever position you are, whatever career you're doing, whatever position you're in, as long as if you have a heavy uh, ego or self in there, a lot of self in there, um, then you can't get true happiness. A lot of people thought um, they did good deeds in this society. They thought, I do so many good stuff. You know, I donate money and do, do all this um, clean the rubbish and stuff. Am I uh, accumulating merit? Is that actually accumulating merit? Not necessary. And there are cases where people are doing meritorious deeds. Looks like doing the meritorious deeds. However, ended up in lower tree realms, tree lower realms. Why? Why did that happen? Because they don't know what is actually meritorious. They thought what they're doing is meritorious, but it's not. not it's not harmful only for now, but it's even worse as it accumulates gets worse as you keep doing it, the false things that brings into next life. Because all these elements of selfishness uh, still in there, mixed in there. It's like poison inside a beautiful dew. Oh, some people are very good, speak very uh, nice, uh, looks very nice and, and acts like very nice person. And he looks like he's doing good things. Uh, but we must understand the the, 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 the the heart behind it. Is it pure? Uh, in the past, have you seen a Chinese uh, drama? Uh, I always watch it when I was young. Uh, a lot of like those wuxia kind of thing. Uh, Mr. Bao, you know, the Bao Qingtian, the Judge Bao in Tang Dynasty, Song of Tang, I forgot. And it's, it's a very good, fair judge, 
uh, who uh, has a very dark complexion, and he's he's always he's very righteous. Everyone trusts him uh, because he's very unbiased. In the story, there's a lot of uh, cases, uh, case studies, right? He, the reason he's called unbiased is because he dare to challenge the authorities that are corrupted, corrupting the laws. So in front of law, everyone's equal, right? And then he he able to oversee the, you know, the power and able to capture these um, corrupted people into the law. So why why does Mr. Bao capture all these seemingly good people? A lot of them looks like good people. Everyone praised them, but when Mr. Bao exposed them, their actual um, intention and their deeds behind the scene, they are not actually good. There's a lot of a uh, uh, greed element, uh, hatred inside as well. Like you know, trying to uh, uh, get back at someone. So we need wisdom to see through this. Something they are hidden very deep. And the point is that so that we are able to do good, actual good things. Uh, in Buddhism, there are a standard for being good. You want to be a good person, right? There are standards for being good person. To be a true good person person deserving to be called as good, what is it? How do we define it? How did Buddha define it? Buddha told us, in the three, in, in the three um, merit, uh, pure meritorious deeds, if you fulfill this three big category of meritorious deeds, then you are considered qualified as being a good person. What is the first meritorious deed? First one is to be filial to the parents, love and respect to the parents. Only then you will be considered as entry-level good people. And then you also need to be respectful to your teachers. So love your parents, respect your teachers. And Buddha is our teacher. So when he taught you something that you understand, you should follow. And when you move up to that level, no uh, upheld the precepts of no killing, no no harming sentient beings, verbally or physically. Other than that, uh, every kind deeds you do, if you divert away from the standards, then it's not considered as good. It's true. Other than this uh, standard, uh, the, if, if you divert from that, then all the good deeds are not considered as good. Without this foundation, without this guy. A lot of people ask me, Master, I want to be a good people. So I want to good I want to be good people, so I want to do good things. So where are good things for me to do? In front of you. Every time, everywhere, wherever you are, you can do good. So therefore, uh, a lot of people say it, uh, Master uh, in Buddhist uh, Dharma Center. Uh, as for example, our Dharma Center. Should we do charity? Is it good? It's good, right? People say it's good. If we uh, come to here, uh, the temple, and I want to start uh, by doing charity, charitable deeds, I would say not necessary. Isn't like, you know, Offering, giving offerings to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha is a big thing. It's a good merit. Yes, it is. But what kind of heart do you have? What kind of attitude do you bring with you when you offer it? It's very important. 
actually most important because a lot of people bring a lot of element of self which is my fame my position my face uh, my wealth they are using that kind of intention to offer if people would bring this kind of attitude and still keep it in their heart then we didn't truly learn buddhism we didn't truly use the buddha's dharma to wash it away and we, we are not considered as true buddhists therefore when you see things you know people doing charitable uh it's good right people recognize you the country will even give you um, a plaque saying that this group of people are very good and it will put you in the pedestrian and praise you in front of national television uh, because you contribute a lot to the society is it a good thing it looks good but it's not right why where did it go wrong isn't Shaiyamuni Buddha told us to be a good person, to do good deeds, speak good words? Yeah, we should come to the Buddha temple and, you know, protect the Dharma by, you know, helping out the temple. And also give offering to the venerables so that I can accumulate merits. Also give it to the temple so that I accumulate merits. Yes, it's good. However, we must know the core value, the core foundation of a, I mean, the core purpose of a Dharma center. What's the point of a Dharma center? What's the benefit? What's the what's the first responsibility of a Dharma center? It's not to seek recognition. It's not to seek fame, praise. We are not here for accumulating wealth. Uh, we want a big temple, grand or grandos, with uh, all the beautiful buildings and architects. And so that I can control a lot of people in this uh, place. Is that actual Dharma center? Dharma center? During Bu Shaiyamuni Buddha's time, uh, his whole life only has three clothes, and he lives under a tree, he sleep under the tree. He don't have a place actually owned by him. No, he doesn't have it. He sleep under the trees almost most of the day. If you want to build a dharma place, a good one, a really luxurious one, he just need to say, "I want a dharma place." 16 countries would go flock to him and build it every single place he, he walked by. It's easy. Because all his Dharma protectors are kings, but he do not accept it. He do not ask for it. So the point of Buddhism and the point of building a Dharma place that, uh, that we see now is to educate. If the fundamental responsibility is not clear then what's the point of coming in here and learning buddhism there's no benefit from buddhism if we do not understand why are we learning buddhism and then buddhism's most important role uh, for a dharma center is educate us how to be a human that's the first step and but the most fundamental step how to be a good human how to be a you know decent human beings if you can't even be a decent human beings, and I say I want to be born in pure land, do you have guarantees to it? Guarantees, I'm talking about. Can you be happy in this life if you can't be a decent human? Can you be healthy? Can you live carefree if you are not a decent person? Today, we learn Buddhism, we must understand, able to uh, 
breakthrough, see through what is actually harmful, what is actually beneficial. What is right, what is wrong. So the point of um, this um, understanding this, we only then know it that attaining enlightenment is the way, is the permanent way, it's a long-term way to actually bring us to that state of happiness or um, to, to liberate from sufferings or void of sufferings. So every type of Dharma Center must have a goal when they establish. So we're talking about a grand, like like the, the shared objective, but every Dharma Center has must have a goal. Remember, uh, we if we are uh, coming to a Dhamma place, center, we must ask the first question. Uh, today, I come here to learn Buddhism. What's my goal? Uh, today, I chant Amitofo, right? This Dhamma, this Dhamma place tell me to chant Amitofo. And now I chant Amitofo. So, have I started to understand and believe and truly be confidence, not believe, confidence in Buddhist teaching? Because in, 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 in this era, there are many offshoots, demonimations and offshoots or schools and branch of Buddhism that exists until today. Every single denomination and every single offshoots from the denomination have their own specific cultivated goal. Like our family, our, all our family, uh, each family has different objectives. Everyone is different. They have different uh, ambitions and goals. Um, so does the Dhamma Center. Uh, today, if we wish uh, to be uh, successful in cultivate Buddhism, in, in, in this uh, lesson, we must not mix them up, mix all the denominations and offshoots up. Uh, because if we mix up different methods of learning Buddhism, in the end, you learn nothing. Master of none, because we're jack of all trades. Nothing, master of none. You master nothing. You, you have. You cannot get any depth in anything. For example, uh, okay, sorry. For example, uh, the current uh, one of the shoot branch is a violin. If I want to chant Amitofo. I go to a pure land Dharma center. If I like to meditate, not just sitting meditate, as in meditative tranquility, I also I can go to a Zen Dharma center. If you want to learn uh, tantric or mantra, uh, Buddhist uh, based learning, then you go to a Vajrayana or Tibetan Buddhism. Or if you like to do good deeds really like to help those uh, vulnerable people and connect with people, then go to Tzuji. You can't mix them up together. Suddenly, one uh, Monday I go to Pure Land, Tuesday I go to Zen, Thursday I go to uh, Tibetan, and then Friday I go to uh, Tzuji. It makes up too much. Mm. You, you're confused. And because everyone has a different goal, they say different things, and you hear that all of them, all of them are right, so nothing is right, <laughs> in a way, and and get nowhere in our practice. Just like when we cultivate, learn painting, uh, if you want to uh, focus in one path, uh, you need to understand the painting itself. The, the techniques and all that, you need time to um, get into it. You can't just Monday learn painting, Tuesday learn piano, Thursday learn dancing. Uh, mix them up. You know, you need to set aside one time for you to focus, to get in depth into what you want to learn. So be specific and focus on one goal. 
and one path at a time. Uh, for a beginner of Buddhism, uh, we must have a goal. Uh, you cannot, um, we don't do that because, you know, I don't like other shoots or temples and stuff. No, no, it's not because we're excluding people or narrow-minded. The whole point is to, uh, to get something in the end, uh, to learn something in the end. Because especially this denomination are actually meant for the beginners, helping the beginners, so that when they come in, they only have one path one clear path, everyone's following that one path. You have a very clear guideline and you have peers, you have a teacher, they're all following one path. You will easily achieve success because you will, be, you will get, move forward quickly, especially in this era. For a Dharma place, a, t a Dharma center, to be authentic is not easy. Because an authentic Dharma center will be protected, literally will be protected by Buddhas and heavenly beings. Like they will be a bodyguard of this Dharma center. If a Dharma center uh, needs to reach this authenticity, first they must have Sadama, which is the Dharma of the Buddha, Buddha's teaching. And then they must have people who follow it actually practice it not just talk actually practicing it. it's um it's all earned from our practice and benefits our beings if we want to be happy want to um, achieve happiness achieve that perfect goal we have we can't just follow we can't just ask others to give us for example husband and wife they argue every day. Why do they argue? My wife, for example, my wife, uh, always ask me, uh, demand a lot for me. Uh, oh, I have a lot of expectation on you, but end up all I get is disappointment. <laughs> And, and um, in the end, what's left is pain. You know, the more you love, the more you pain, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Like for the ladies here, like think about your husband, like do you, do you have a sense of some expectation towards your husband? Some form of expectations. Not just uh, not, not everyone has that has expectation of something, not just someone, something. Uh, but we must understand that if we want uh, truly have a merit that is worthy uh, to, you know, invite, worthy of protected by the heavenly beings, we have to start from ourselves, change from ourselves, uh, be good ourselves, be elegant ourselves. It relies on you, yourself, improving your own quality. And to attain equally perfect enlightenment, we must break through one grade. There are many grades of ignorance, many layers. Think of onions. You must break through at least first grade or one grade of ignorance. Only then you can earn enlightenment to one grade of Dhammakaya, which is the truth itself. And that kind of attainment is it's what Buddha has attained. So you're actually on the same platform with Buddha. Many ways, long way to go, but you're there. So hence, uh, it's called Zhen 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 Jue, equally perfect enlightenment, equally perfect enlightenment to Buddha. But he's not Buddha yet, however. We will um, discuss about it to everyone. Uh, who can consider his actual Buddha, uh, like level of Buddha? So this level is called Bodhisattva. It's my notation, and it's called equally perfect enlightenment. And there is no selfishness at all. And when you keep going, 
on this path of breaking ignorance and keep bringing back your truth self, your, your Buddha nature, Alamakaya, then you reach a certain level where everything is cleared, naturally, you will clear, and you have achieved unsurpassed equally perfect enlightenment. It's complete, it's perfect. It's what we call perfection in literal sense. And this person is called Buddha. If you are uh, equally perfect enlightenment, you are called Bodhisattva. So this is level two. First one is Arahant, uh, right awakening. And then this one is equally perfect enlightenment. It's Bodhisattva and then Buddha. This is the highest level. So all this name in Buddhism has uh, its purpose. If you attained uh, right awakening, first step, right awakening, is called Arahant. As you can see on the first sentence. Um, Arahant, Bodhisattva, Buddha, uh, they are a common titles and they are, they are procedures in gaining it. They are all human. They attain in the level of human, in, in, the, in the state of human realm. They are not immortals or sien. They are not uh, not really immortals, but they are not like um, spiritual spirit beings or something. They are humans. So where are Buddha, Bodhisattva, Arahan currently resides as? It's a it's a way to describe something when someone has reached reached the other end of the shore. This show of sufferings, of pains, of complications, and all that, all that pain, then that person is called Arahan Bodhisattva Buddha. Depends how far they reach. Only when you achieve these three levels, then your life considered as successful. These three terms uh, we must be familiar with no matter what traditions or anything. As long as it's Buddhism, we must be very aware of these three terms. It's not, we must, be, what should we be aware of these terms? It's not man, one person, it's not an individual. You say, oh, this uh, Bodhisattva, help me. Which Bodhisattva? <laughs> Which Buddha? Hmm. So it's like professor, master, bachelor in university. They are all common titles that confer to someone who earned it. For example, our historical Buddha, what was the historian call it? Shaimuni Buddha. Is that refer is that title only reserved to him, this Prince Siddhartha? No. There are many Shayamuni Buddhas. You know, if you recall the name, what's the meaning of Shayamuni? Compassion and purity. So there's a lot of Buddha that are compassionate and pure across the whole Dharma realm. Isn't Shaimuni Buddha only meant to the the one, the Prince Siddhartha? It is in case, but in its most deeper sense of, of, of meaning, it's not just one person. It goes beyond one person. If we talk about a story closer to us, um, well, not that close, but Tang Dynasty, um, Precept Master Dao Xuan, uh, he's, the, he's the first patriarch of School of Precepts in China. Uh, just for your information, School of Precepts is shared by both Theravada and Mahayana. Uh, do you have uh, any um, uh, how to say, impressions upon this venerable, this master? Uh, I think the, all of us uh, knows, but there are many young people who doesn't know. Uh, Venerable Master Dao Xuan is the um, patriarch of this school of precepts in China. Uh, he's very famous when he cultivates on the mountain, you know, who gives the offering to him. Uh, he actually cultivates in, in, the, in the mountain. Heavenly beings is the one who cook for, uh, for them and offered to this uh, Venerable Mas uh, Master Dao Xuan. He doesn't even need to um, ask for alms 
among the uh, folks. He doesn't need to worry about food, cooking, washing. Heavenly being just offer it to them. You know why heavenly being was one uh, thinks he's deserving of receiving alms because he actually helped precepts. He actually followed precepts. His behavior is right. A lot of people say, Shai Mubuda, oh, the one from India, right? The sage from India. No, it's not just him. Everywhere. Shai Mubuda is everywhere. Not just this earth. Many, in many universes. And another famous example, Bodhisattva Guan Yin. Is Guan Yin or Avalokitesvara? Is Bodhisattva Guan Yin same people? One per one people? No. It's also a title. There are many Guan Yin. There are many Guan Yin Pusa, Bodhisattva Guan Yin. Like, uh, is there only one professor in the world? No, right? There are many professors. Professor of this, prof Professor Lee, Professor uh, Alex, Professor Malcolm, stuff like that. There are infinitude of them. So which one? Are you referring to if you call their name? Even in doctorate and doctors, medical doctor, there are many doctors in hospital. Which doctor do you want to look at? Uh, refer to. Uh, a lot of this we must understand. Uh, if we understand. Um, if you thought they are one person, then we are wrong. Uh, Bodhisattva Guan Yin. What does Bodhisattva Guan Yin mean? Compassion. Person who are really compassionate, they are Bodhisattva Guan Yin. And there are a lot of Bodhisattva or the practitioner who attain the equally perfect enlightenment Bodhisattva that are as compassion uh, as a very compassionate, boundless compassionate. That means there's a lot of bodhisattva guan yin. And then also it is another pu xian. Di zhang. Di zhang means earth treasure. Bila means happiness. My tre my ya Buddha. They are endless my ya Buddhas. They are all compassionate. So which one are you referring to? For example, Guan Yin and uh, Bodhisattva Guan Yin, if you actually are as compassionate as Guan Yin Pusa, then you are Guan Yin Pusa, then you are Bodhisattva Guan Yin. If you have strong vow of um, saving all the beings and be respectful and filial to the parents and all beings, then you are Bodhisattva Siddhikapa, Dijang. Oh, hello, Buddhism. Uh, mixed up, confused with the name of uh, Bodhisattva uh, Buddhas, Bodhisattva and Arahant. They're confused when they hear that. If you ask people around, your parents, your or your friends, your peers, what's Bodhisattva? Or if you know Chinese, what's Pusa? <laughs> they can't explain it. It's hard. They don't understand. There's no concept of it. Uh, if in our youth group, uh, if you ask us what is bod uh, Bodhisattva, are we clear? What is Bodhisattva? And before we know it, before we learn this, we'll, we'll get confused. We can't, um, because we will not uh, learn it in depth, so we don't know. We always thought this uh, individual is a name. We didn't know that this is an infinite um, meaning inside this name. Buddha in uh, pure sutras, pure land sutra. 
Have you all read um, Infinite Life Sutra? <laughs> yeah, we have. Have you read like uh, Infinite Life Sutra? Uh, it's actually very good. It's just we need to find English version. Uh, and what is Amitabha Sutra? What is Amitofo? We're also not clear. And what is Shayamuni Buddha? We also don't know. We should learn. If we don't learn, how can we uh, cultivate? If we don't know who is my teacher and what's the profile of my teacher, then how do I attain anything under him? If I say I'm Amitofo, then I don't know who Amitofo is. How can I have connections with this teacher and actually learn? Same goes for Bodhisattva Guan Yin and Bodhisattva Di Zhang. We need to learn. It's only benefit, no harm at all. Buddha in in Finite Life Sutra, Wu Liang Shu Jing, in Finite Life Sutra, uh, Sutra, So in the sutra, the people in pure land, every one of them, sorry about the slide, it's not here, but um, everyone in pure land, they all practice Bodhisattva Pusian's act. So they all act like Bodhisattva Pusian. In pure land, um, people who are born there, they are all Bodhisattva Pusian, which means they have the 10 act to do it. And Bodhisattva Pusian is infinite. There is no way you can calculate them. Where is Bodhisattva Pusian? So we should ask which Bodhisattva Pusian. As a Buddhist, we should understand in this way of learning Buddhism, uh, we will not be uh, fall into the superstitiousness or uh, lost when we're learning it. Uh, so uh, I would like to continue um, in depth next time so that we no longer be treated as a superstitious group because we know what we are learning. We have a clear objective of what we're learning. For example, I believe in Buddha. I have taken precepts. I have taken uh, I have taken refuge and precepts. And someone asks, what is Buddha? And they can't answer it. Satisfactory answer. What is refuge? I do not know. Who is Bodhisattva? Uh, not that statue? Not sure. There's a lot of this happening inside the temple, inside the among the Buddhist community. It's very um, unfortunate. Uh, I hope that as uh, the youth group, we need to take it seriously. Uh, take you know the Buddhist teaching, uh, the understanding Buddhism seriously. Only then we understand what we learn and how to lead ourselves and others to learn. In Buddhism, what do we learn? If we ask you this question, in Buddhism. What do we seek for in Buddhism? A lot of us, we should be clear that what are we looking for? We're looking for... Uh, let's continue. Uh, to, to seek for uh, wisdom. I would like to repeat myself. Seeking for wisdom. That's the first thing we need to seek. How do we seek wisdom? Think about it. In Zen Buddhism, uh, to seek enlightenment. In Pure Land, it talks about a one-mindedness, one-heartedness, so not to move in Pure Land. Uh, if you have achieved that you know, single-mindedness on Amitofo, 
you become you equate equate trans, translate to Zen, you have gained full enlightenment. In pure land, called the chanting Amitabha, everyone has uh, has qualifications to attain that level. No, going to pure land, and once you deepen your learning, then you have break through the doubt. You have no longer have doubt, and then you know why. So why do we need to go into this single mindedness of chanting Amitabha? So going back, all right, to the big questions: Why are we learning Buddhism to seek for wisdom? So this will go in depth next week. So this. Today, I would like to uh, just um, give you a brief overview of what is a uh, right awakening, equally perfect enlightenment, and unsurpassed equally perfect enlightenment. Uh, equally, unsurpassed equally perfect enlightenment is Buddha, Bodhisattva, and then Arahant. And we look, knowing these three main titles in Buddhism, why are we taking refuge? Why are we learning Buddhism? These are all will be explained next week as well. We have explained this in the previous class. Today, uh, we'll also talk about denominations and schools of Buddhism uh, a lot. But we also talk about what, what's the point of Buddhism? What's the goal of Buddhism? And why do we choose uh, this uh, Pure school, out of all that. So we'll talk about that in next week. Uh, next week, Wednesday, uh, I would like to uh, you know, invite you all to learn. Again, if today I have uh, say anything uh, not right or inappropriate, then please give me some feedback. Uh, thank you so much, Amitabha. For uh, may you all be healthy. Let's dedicate our merits. May uh, the merits and virtue accrue from this work. Merits of Dharma talks dedicate to all sentient beings or beings, sorry, or beings of all uh, universe uh, to dedicate to our karma creditors so that they all may be born in pure land. Uh, repay the four kinds of kindness above, relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire to invoke the body heart uh, and cultivate the teachings for the rest of this life then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Thank you so much. Amitabha. Amitabha. Uh, today we have uh, um, almost reached the time, 9.30. Next week, uh, we also take this time. Every lesson, I can only uh, more than uh, about 40 minutes. Uh, it won't be as long as this. So thank you so much, Amitabha. Thank you, Amitabha.